By completing this Easter egg, you access the only way of obtaining the schematics for the Bloodburner Key, Mags of Holding, and VR11. What's going on guys? How are you meatballs? This is the complete, correct, and elite Act 4, Mission 2, Season 2 Reloaded Countermeasures Easter Egg Guide within Modern Warfare Zombies. There are multiple Easter eggs within this game, so here's the difference. Full guides available for all of these Easter eggs on my channel in the description. The Season 1 Zombies Easter Egg was Act 4, Mission 1, Bad Signal, initially accessible via the portal at about the F6 coordinate of the Urzik Stand map. Through this Easter egg and version of the Dark Ether, you were able to obtain the schematics for the Ether Blade, Dogbone, and Golden Arbor Plates. After completion of this Easter egg, you can re enter this Dark Ether portal at around the F6 coordinate of the map through a larger rift. The Season 2 Zombies Easter egg was Act 4, Mission 2, Countermeasures. Initially accessible via the portal at about the F4 coordinate of the Urzik Stand map, and as you'll find throughout this video, because that's what this video is about, after completion of this Easter egg, you can re enter this Dark Ether portal at around the G4 coordinate of the map through a larger rift after completing an easter egg. Now that we know which easter egg we're doing, the first thing you need to do is change your act mission to act 4, mission 2, countermeasures. As far as what to run, run what you like, but I've been rocking with this cast of 74U variant that's been more than solid. Also, decoys and healing aura are lifesavers. Next, in game, set up with at minimum a purple tier 3 pack of much weapon and your basic good perks. Quick revive, speed cola, stamina of juggernaut, dead shot, and though not needed, death perception would be a fantastic helper in a future step. The Scorcher is also not needed but could be beneficial in helping you move around the Dark Aether area more quickly since a lot has to be done within this Dark Aether very efficiently. You really don't have to go too crazy though because the act mission is only tier 2 zombies but you can never be too careful. Next, enter the Countermeasures Rift available within the main Urzik stand map at around the F4 coordinate of the map and we'll just follow the prompts. No, please watch the full video as if you want to save a significant chunk of time. You can do so by completing all of this stuff in a different order as I'll explain in just a bit. First, investigate the distress signal. I would like to mention real quick that just like the other elite MWZ cheat sheet maps that I have available within my Discord, I also have a version of this brand new Dark Ether map in progress. It'll be constantly updated as new stuff is found, but as for this video, I'm using a rough copy to just show you what you have to do for now. The final version will be on par with the other elite ones, updated and uploaded, hopefully within the next 12 hours. Moving forward, in order to investigate the signal, go to the area it directs you to and which should always be here at the D7 coordinate of this map on the top floor right up the stairs. After that, just escort the ACV tank that's right outside the building which does seem to be invincible. When it stops, investigate the source of signal disruption where prompted by interacting with the console it shows, but it should always be in the same spot as in my game in this mini amusement park. After this, we had to kill two different mimics to be able to escort the ACV further. Shortly after, it'll stop in front of this red little mushroom thing. Just wait for it to attach to the ACV to be able to continue your escort. Now when the escort stops and the prompt changes to clear the infected spores from the mole, simply go around the mole and shoot all of the spores like you would in any other infested stronghold or ether nest. The spores can be tricky to find though and since you're limited to as long as your gas mask survives, make sure to keep note of the two ammo crates within the mole as by using them, you'll not only be able to refill your ammo but also your gas mask health. There's one on the bottom floor and one on the top floor. If your gas mask does break, it won't be that big of a deal though because as you'll notice, there are a ton of other gas gas mask hanging around the mole for you to pick up, but that's just a secondary option. Either way, between the bottom and top floors, you'll have to shoot 15 total spores, all in which will be much easier to locate if you have the earlier mentioned death perception perk. Just as with any other infested stronghold or ether nest, it'll literally show the spores through the walls. Now, upon completion of this spore area, you'll have to wait a couple of seconds for your crew to return back outside to the ACV with you. You'll now be escorted to the anomaly site where you can activate the PND to complete the mission process. And before before you're able to exfil, a Mangler variant will spawn that upon killing will give you some rewards. Make sure to interact with this reward portal right now and pick up the golden drum from the rift. At this point, you have the option to either exfil and come back into the mission to run through a second time faster or to do the rest of this now and or, like I said earlier, you can do any of this in any order you want now that you know what you'll have to do. So to clarify, within this Dark Ether portal, you must obtain four different parts that you'll use in your next game in order to upgrade and then placed down in pedestals to open a rift gate within the standard Urzik stand map. This gate will allow you to access the dark ether just like with the first dark ether easter egg. The issue is is that you have to get all of these parts within this version of the dark ether while you're doing the story mission quest. So let's consider you're going for it right now. As for the first part of the four parts, it's the golden drum. It's already gold and you get it from completing the mission. So once you have it, you're good. Just hold on to that for the rest of your games. Yes, that's plural. The second of the four parts is the purple MMA gloves, which can be found 
found via a seal located on the ship at around the D5 coordinate of the Dark Ether map. Upon activating the seal, an insta kill will spawn in. Use this insta kill to melee kill as many zombies as you can within the circle around the seal. Once you melee kill enough zombies, a reward portal will spawn with your purple MMA gloves. Make sure to claim them. The third of the four parts, which can be get in any single order, is the purple perforated target, which can be found via the seal located at the E4 coordinate of this Dark Ether map. Upon activating the seal, you'll have to headshot kill zombies within the spawn circle around the seal. Once done, a reward portal will spawn with your purple perforated target. The fourth of the four parts is the purple mirror, which can be located around the I8 coordinate of the Dark Ether map. This one is tricky, but upon activating the seal, you'll have to coordinate the ammo mod you apply and use on your weapon with the color of the circle surrounding the seal. On each of the four corners of the seal is an ammo mod that you can interact with for any specific one you may want or need. When you interact with it, it'll drop onto the ground and then you'll be able to apply it to your weapon. So, if the circle is glowing red like in my game, run up to the seal, interact with the napalm burst option, apply it to your weapon, and get napalm burst kills within the red fiery circle. Eventually, the color and the effect around the circle will change and so will the applied ammo mod that you have to kill zombies with. The order is random, but everything you need will be found within the circle. After napalm burst kills, the fire circle turned to smoke for me, indicating that I had to get cryo freeze kills. After that, electricity filled the circle indicating dead wire kills, and that was it. Just match the ammo mod to the color and effect of the surrounding circle until a reward rift spawns with your mirror. Upon completion of all of this, you can successfully expel using the portal at the soccer field at the E5 coordinate of this dark ether map. If done efficiently, all of this can be done, like I said earlier, in one run, in one game. Also, keep in mind that you can do seals and the story mission at the same time in any order, so don't be scared to mix around the sequence in which you get any of these items or do story quests that you desire. It's all up to you, but just know everything is much easier with the team because, for example, as one person does the story mission stuff, the other person can work on the seals. Moving forward, let's assume you have within your rucksack a golden drum, purple MMA gloves, a purple perforated target, and a purple pristine mirror. These items can be split between your teammates, but all items are needed together in the same game at the same time, and you'll have no issues. This means that if you're playing two-player, your friend can hold two items and you can hold two items for the sake of saving rucksack space. But you must both go together in the same game because you need all four parts in the same game. Now, we actually are almost done now, just a little bit more to go. Load into a standard match of zombies, and yes, bring in some good stuff if you have it to save some time and guarantee a good setup. We will now be upgrading each of the items we received from a previous game's Dark Ether, and this can be done in any order. Gold Drum. It's already gold and ready to go. Nothing further is needed for this. Gold MMA Gloves. In order to upgrade the MMA Gloves from purple to gold, make your way to the boxing gym at the FA coordinate of the map. Drop your weapon in the rink via the rucksack, and then interact with the floor of the rink to offer the unattuned relic. Right outside the rink is some punching bags, and by using your fist to punch each punching bag individually two times, from left to right, each one will set on fire. After activating the third and final one, a zombie will spawn within the rink in which you must melee to death to acquire the upgraded gold MMA gloves. Gold Perforated Target In order to upgrade the perforated target from purple to gold, make your way to the target area at the H8 coordinate of the map. At one of these shooting stations, you'll be able to interact with a case on the floor to offer the unattuned relic. After doing so, eight purple glowing targets will spawn in, in which you must shoot. You'll know you've shot a target when the glow around it turns from purple to red. All locations are shown on your screen now, and after shooting the final target, a zombie will spawn from it, in which upon killing, will drop your upgraded golden perforated target. Gold Pristine Mirror In order to upgrade the pristine mirror from purple to gold, make your way to the cemetery at the I3 coordinate of the map. At the gravestone with the mirror on it, very obvious, you can offer the unattuned relic. After doing so, the mini building right next to you will begin to glow, in which all around the walls of the inside and outside are ammo mods. A few different zombies of different types will spawn in front of that initial gravestone that you offered your relic at, and these have to be killed by a specific ammo mod, so if you need a specific one, you can grab it from that building I just mentioned. The fire zombie is taken down with napalm burst, the purple zombie is taken down with dead wire, the smoky zombie is taken down with cryo freeze. Remember that once you interact with an ammo mod on the wall, you must interact with it again on the floor to apply it to your weapon. Like before, it's either random or brain rot just isn't used, however, if it is bugging out, this means that if you do see something new, that brain rot would be your only option to fill the ammo mod gap with, both for this step and the seal step within the dark ether from earlier. Either way, after shooting the final zombie will drop your upgraded golden pristine mirror. The final thing you need to do is now place down all of your golden items on the pedestals at the G4 coordinate of the map where a new dark ether rift will spawn. Each pedestal has an exact picture of each item, so place the gold mirror in the mirror pedestal, the gold target in the target pedestal, the gold gloves in the gloves pedestal, and the gold drum in the drum pedestal. Pretty self-explanatory. A rift will spawn and out of it will spawn a boss which will always, I believe, be a mimic. And upon killing this boss, a rift will spawn with a gap
guaranteed sigil. At this point, you have the option to either use the regular sigils that the boss just gave you and are earnable via tier three contracts as well, or you can use elder sigils if you have any from the other dark ether, since this rift portal works exactly the same as the other one. A regular sigil will give you 30 minutes within the dark ether and stuff will be slightly easier. You will, however, not have the chance to earn any of the schematics for the new items. You will only be able to earn one-time use acquisition cases for each. This means that you can only get a case for the VR11, not the schematic for it that will allow you to craft it via the menus. An elder sigil, however, will give you only 15 minutes within the dark ether and zombies will be a bit more rough, which in this dark ether is definitely hard, but nowhere near as bad as the elder sigil original dark ether from season one. But by completing contracts in this elder sigil dark ether, you have a chance to earn as little as zero, but as many as all of three of the new schematics in any given run, Max of Holding, Bloodburner Key, and VR11. These are the craftable versions of the items via the menu. As opposed to the season one dark ether, these schematics are not guaranteed by doing contracts and it is random on what you actually get from reward rifts. The best part is that you can also earn cases in here as well in the other in the elder sigil dark ether on top of schematics so if you don't get the schematics you at least will get a couple of weapon cases but the only way to get schematics is via elder sigil contracts in this dark ether for the mentioned schematics and as a reminder elder sigils are only earnable via any version of the dark ether you cannot earn them in the main urzik stand map now that you understand the difference between regular sigils and elder sigils pick your poison and insert the correct sigil into the correct side of the rift on one side you can insert the regular sigil and on the other side you can insert an elder sigil have any teammate confirm the teleport and once in the dark ether you'll simply have to do bunny contracts in any order you want eliminate the big bounty bunny located at the c5 coordinate in a building interact with the bunny to initiate the contract i've heard that the boss you have to kill could randomize but in my games i've only ever gotten a mega abomination either way follow the marker for the boss on your screen and defeat it for a reward rift and the ability to move on to the next contract locate and activate the pnd bunny located at the e7 coordinate on the roof of a building interact with the bunny and head to the marked pnd location to complete an outlast contract upon completion a reward rift will spawn and you'll have the ability to move on to the next contract disable all extractors in the area bunny located at the h6 coordinate at the tippy top of the mole building interact with the bunny and simply make your way to each of the marked ether reactors to interact with it to disable it decoys and or cashmere are extremely useful at this point and once done a reward rift will spawn or you can get some awesome rewards that's it take care of your meatballs peace do not forget to exfil